Welcome to my channel. Thank you guys for tuning in again. It's that time again. And as you can see, my pieces have finally arrived. Uh, the pieces that I've been talking about in my other videos. Um, I placed this order with Heimdallah about two, maybe two and a half months ago. Uh, and everyone across the board who has ordered has been experiencing delays. Obviously, that's due to the COVID-19 situation, but uh, this was made worse by the actual um, shipping agent where uh, they changed some standards. So um, Heimdallah unfortunately had to repack all of this stock. So I did speak to um, a contact in Heimdallah and he basically said due to the automatic watch, uh, the suppliers decided that with the crown engaged, there was still some power reserve and that indicated a charge. Um, so they basically had to pop the crowns on all of them, uh, rewrap them and send them out. So when my ones came, all the crowns were popped on them. So obviously I asked and that's how I found out. Okay, so I'm very excited about these reviews coming up with these three pieces that I've ordered. Um, before I go any further, hit the subscribe button. I need your support. I appreciate the current support I've got. Um, obviously it helps me, motivates me to make more videos and to order in uh, new and exciting pieces to be reviewed. That being said, let's open up. You see the packaging is new. Um, it's a bit poor, to be honest, straight off. Um, I'll always take, make a point of mentioning packaging. I'll just cover it real quick. Uh, packaging for me, uh, it goes hand in hand with the actual brand. You've got a lot cheaper brands that produce uh, better packing. Obviously it's part of the, you know, the whole watch. Obviously, to some people, it may not be as important, um, but I think if you're going to represent your brand, at least do it correctly. Uh, and what I'm kind of seeing is that really good quality watches um, are coming in the most cheapest, you know, rubbish packaging, whereas the cheaper watches are coming with something pretty decent. I mean, it's just part of that whole marketing um, plan where you want to standardize everything across the board. Um, I think this is the new stuff they've gone with. Personally, I don't mind this side, but the printing, you can see, is a bit bogus. The um, thing is, Heimdallah are really good, so they let themselves down with the packaging slightly. Ultimately, it matters what's actually inside the box, you know. Um, and of course, we don't want them to add any more um, price or any more money to the actual prices. So, I'll be ready. Now this is one of the pieces. Before I go any further, I'm gonna stop it right here and um, I'll let you guys watch a short video. Very excited when I got these pieces. Um, you know, I've, obviously the bronze stuff has been out for a while. Um, I The reason I never ordered them earlier because I didn't really I like them. Um, and then I just took uh, took a chance on these. And I'll tell you what, I think uh, I might have changed my mind on uh, on these bronze pieces. This one looks absolutely stunning. Let's start off by covering uh, the dimensions. So the diameter on the watch case is 47 millimeters thickness is 14.5 the lug to lug is of course 47 as well uh, because of the tuna can style and the lug width is 22 mil just on that i actually like the fact that it is a 22 mil bracelet uh, quite a lot of the watches do come in on 20 mils um, and i feel on the bigger watches or heavier watches you do need uh, some girth to the strap bracelet just to add a bit of comfort the weight of the watch is coming in at 126 grams, which uh, is a decent weight in your hand. And obviously with this coming on a rubber dive strap, all the weight you'll feel uh, on the actual watch head. 
the start off on the drive the, the diver strap um i'm not i'm not a fan of these however this is uh, a lot better than the 7s26 uh dive strap that you get from seiko those are actually rock solid um but uh the newer dive straps that you get on the newer seiko turtles um and the newer divers it's a lot softer obviously it's material related um that being fully silicon whereas this um it's probably a softer rubber however uh, it is still pretty comfortable on the buckle you've got Heimdall stamped let's flip it over you see it's got stainless steel back with the specifications engraved and the logo now I have always had a problem with this um, it is slightly rough so over the day uh, of wearing it it can get quite uncomfortable because it's always rubbing against your skin so especially if you're doing any activities um, then it's not painful at all just slight bit of discomfort you're always having to um, adjust it so now if we move this around to the case as you can see it is Heimdaller's tuna can homage uh, and there's plenty of these uh, tuna can homages out there um, nearly all of the main brands do a version the shroud is all bronze the screws are bronze so there's already a pretty decent quality which you can see on the case so let's talk about bronze um i have no idea uh, not the slightest clue um where to start when it comes to bronze i did do a quick check um and i think from what i can see there are two slight versions um you've got obviously the copper and tin combination which gives you the darker uh finish on the bronze so where you see some of these micro brands coming out with um the darker bronze watches that's due to the tin content uh, and i believe what Heimdall say from the website this is the aluminium and copper mix so the finish is a lot brighter and it is finished really well the bezel insert is a copper insert and the bezel insert comes with three different loom options so you can have no loom and you can have just this triangular indice on the top you can have that just covered with loom or you can have all the indices uh, that are loomed looking at the pictures when uh, you're trying to order this um, i think the fully loomed indices they actually put me off because on the pictures the picture really good and uh, the loom looks like it's white um, so having it looking at it on the picture you don't want to see a bronze watch with black and then just white indices on there but um they, they ran out of the stock that i ordered um which was the no the no loom insert and uh, heimdaller contacted me and to say that they have this one available so obviously i opted for it uh, and now that it's in hand i'm actually glad they sent me this because as you can see the indices aren't that white uh with this standout the loom used is swiss c3 super looming over Let's move the bezel. So I'm, I've never had a tuner before uh, and I can say I, I'm not quite used to the bezel action on this is because the shroud is of course in the way. So the only way you can get the slightest bit of grip is just where I'm holding it. You can probably hear uh, the bezel is quite clicky. Um, it sounds, I'd say, slightly plasticky but i think that might be due to the actual material that's been used to construct it with aluminium aluminium and bronze obviously it's less denser than stainless steel however there's no back play um but to be honest if you were actually diving and, and you were wearing some sort of dive gloves i don't see how you would be able to actually turn the bezel as you can see i'm finding it just a bit difficult 
this is lining up of yeah. With that being said, it does line up pretty well. Heimdallah, um, this is the actual second version of these tuners. The first version, um, a few people know that they had, well, they had one main issue, which was the dial, where it says Sharkmaster Automatic had 200 meters written on the dial and the actual case back said 300. So this was a discrepancy picked up by quite a lot of people. And it is present on, uh, from what I know, the 62 MAS Heimdallah as well. So this one actually has the 300 meters on the dial and 300 meters on the back. So they've removed that discrepancy. Now, as a result of the second model, they did go with a different supplier for Sapphire. Uh, and this Sapphire is not AR coated. And I don't think it's got any coating on there um, because it does give off quite a bit of glare, as you can see. So I apologize about that. And it doesn't help that I've got a window facing me shining all this light. Okay, so let's get you a better picture of the dial. Um, so with the tuners, there are a lot, lot of versions of tuners. To be honest, I can't keep up. Uh, with all the versions and variations and I don't know them but uh, doing a quick uh, image search uh, this dial mostly resembles the SBBN007 Marine Master tuna can so you can see the dial is reminiscent of that and it is a matte black dial with gold around the indices so you've got a gilt dial here uh, with applied blue markers you've also got the Heimdallah logo in gold or bronze um, that looks really nice you've got a you've got a border around the date window which I always prefer over having no borders um, I think it should stand out rather than it just looking like a hole in the dial and as I just mentioned Sharkmaster automatic 300 meters now you can see the printing is not that crisp looking at it at a distance you won't see anything but if you do go in closely it's not the sharpest i've seen um even the lower end brands do have pretty crisp printing but who knows it could be because of the ink or there could be many variables the one of the nicest things on this style is the actual hands you can see the bronze hands brushed and there are tuna or frogman style hands the second seconds hand is a lollipop design with a loom on the end and you can see from the dial and the and the hands there is ample ample loom on this which is again swiss c3 super super looming over same as the bezel insert Now the great thing about Heimdallah is they take feedback uh, quite seriously, and you know they are they do look to change um, any any things they have, uh, sorry any issues they have. And you know in this industry, um, the Chinese watch industry, you've got to remember that you know they haven't really found solid su supply chain, so you know they're still going between factories and suppliers uh, trying to get the best products. If someone's out of something, then they might have to find a different supplier. Um, as you do, you know, these are not full-fledged factories. They're, they're, you know, a few guys um, just getting them built, which is what the reality is. Um, yeah, the manufacturers, yeah, the factories, they are but a few, um, and they produce most of the parts. And then what Heimdallah, Steel Dive, etc., what they'll do, they, they run assembly plants. Um, and of course, the difference there is, you know, they do have their own QC standard. So what they deem is acceptable. Um, that obviously represents the, the end and the overall quality in the product. I like the fact that they have a marked chapter ring, again, with the gilt indices. 
and it looks to be made out of plastic which with the color combination is absolutely fine and then you've got a signed crown really well made gives you loads of grip So if you've noticed, I haven't really gone through the specifications like I usually do because um, in my last video, it just, just hit me where it's become a script. Now, every watch that you're getting um, from China, you know, they all have Sapphire. They all have NS35, well, especially the ones that uh, I review. And, you know, same repetitive stuff. Um, which it, everything works that's that's what you want so i think i might just even stop talking about uh, the specifications and i'm just going to assume everybody knows let's try and get a wonderful loom shot and showcase this loom as mentioned swiss c3 super luminova the loom on heimdallers is usually amazing um, it's very oem quality and even the indices on the actual bezel insert show up really well, very clear. And the application of the loom is done to a high standard. The dial in the hands, they're showing a slightly different color, but I think that's just the way the camera is capturing it. But everything is really visible. All the indicators are well loomed, the hands, and you can see the lollipop second hand. And that is just really nice to look at so it's about time to wrap this up let's get a wrist shot in and then we can just summarize so the bracelet uh well the rubber strap that it comes on it is quite big so for the guys out there with the bigger wrist not to worry um, in fact i'll just show you i'm just trying to put it on um, for me, I've got it on the second to last, but it could do with probably being slightly tighter. Personally, for me, uh, I don't like these straps, so I would maybe put it on a Captain Willard strap. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, a strap choice is, is, is subjective. So how does it fit? It fits pretty well. Um, Obviously, apart from the strap being a bit loose, the watch head, because uh, it's 47 mil, lug to lug, it actually sits just right on the wrist. And this is a 6.5 inch wrist. So I think any smaller on the wrist size might not be for you. Um, obviously, you can go for guys with bigger wrists. Um, it's absolutely fine. So the last thing, um, if if those that you don't that don't know uh, about bronze, this will naturally oxidize over time. Uh, so you'll uh, get a patina over the surface of the watch. Um, it looks like corrosion, basically. So when you see copper that's getting corroded, obviously it's not physically corroding. It's just a layer that builds up. So you might get a green, brown. You might get some marks on it, uh, and and that's the whole point of the actual bronze is just to get a nice patina. Uh, make it look all vintage and uh, that can be reset by using lemon juice just cleaning the watch in lemon juice or i've heard vinegar as well so i don't know if anyone has a well patinaed watch and uh, they're probably the best to ask so just to summarize now uh good points obviously being the construction of the watch it's very well constructed um the homogenous of the watch it, you know it's undeniably a Seiko tuner homage the materials used are really good obviously you've got the sapphire you've got the NH35 uh, you've got this copper bezel insert you've got a great design on the dial lovely hands um, and everything is just uh, very functional um, unusual Heimdallah style bad points um, they need to really improve on standardization uh, and this comes as well uh, I want to talk about the names they use. So um, they've tried to use the name Shiryu. You see a few watches um, that are called Shiryu. So I think that that really won't uh, be very popular with, uh, I'd say, the majority of the world. 
So anyone from the western side, obviously we don't know what that means. We really can't relate. So Heimdallah, we've heard that. Um, Proxima, Steel Dive, you know, names like this, San Martin. You know, the, the western names are easy to say. So they need to just stick to Heimdallah. It's a, it's a lovely name. <laughs> lovely name. I mean, it's, it's a great brand name. Uh, you've got, you know, they've got a shark logo. Stick to that and uh, just standardization standardizing it across the range you know you get some crans which are signed some are unsigned um you know you've got variances in the case back so for me personally i like to see something standard across designs especially with brands you know seiko don't really go too far away and nor do a lot of brands so there's a reason they have set emblems logos in certain places or as they're better known as giblets um was there anything else yeah sapphire glass um it'd be nice to get some air coating back on it or some coating because this does glare quite a lot and i think that's probably because it's a, it's a dome sapphire but obviously normal lighting conditions um uh, in the dark the visibility is great if you're going to be out and about on a sunny day you might have to look at this quite closely um just so you can see like the minute markers etc and the indices on the on the chapter ring but overall um is a really really good watch as always subscribe let me know your thoughts in the comments and give me a thumbs up if you like the video if not thumbs down thank you for watching